Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, ASCO uh, selecting this uh, presentation to discuss further and to discuss with you about the five-year overall survival data for the advanced non-small cell lung cancer patients who received pembrolizumab as part of the Keynote 001 clinical trial. So, um, so the Keynote 001 clinical trial was a very unusual phase one trial. It enrolled over 1,000 patients. It uh, led to the initial approval of pembrolizumab in melanoma, in non-small cell lung cancer, as well as the approval of the pdl one diagnostic assay. As far as the lung cancer cohorts, there were 550 patients who were enrolled in the lung cancer cohorts, 101 of whom who had not received prior therapy for advanced non-small cell lung cancer, whereas 449 patients had received at least one prior line of therapy. I had the opportunity to present the data from this study uh, back in 2015, along with a companion uh, article in the New England Journal of Medicine. And at that time, we showed a response rate of about 20% in patients um, who were previously treated. It also showed that patients who had high expression of PDL1, PDL1 expression in at least half of their tumor cells, had clearly superior clinical outcomes as compared to patients who did not. Uh, one thing about that presentation and publication in 2015, though, was that our follow-up time was fairly limited. And of course, the promise of immunotherapy has really been the promise of having a long-lasting and durable clinical benefit. And uh, that, of course, requires further follow-up time. So now, at the presentation uh, tomorrow, you will see data from an analysis on November 5th, 2018. At that time, we had over five years median follow-up. Um, and of the 550 patients who were enrolled, um, 100 of them were still alive at that time. The overall group, over 15% of the patients uh, remained alive at five years. The uh, treatment naive group were required to have PDL1 positive disease. And as you can see here, uh, about 30% of the patients who had PDL1 of at least 50% uh, remained alive at five years. Um, as compared to about half of that in the group who had PDL1 expression between 1 and 49 percent. Among the previously treated patients, there was uh, an allowance for both PDL1 positive and negative disease. Um, and what you can see here is that, uh, again, a quarter of the patients who were PDL1 greater than 50 percent uh, were alive at five years. And I will point out this is not five years from the time of diagnosis, this is five years. From the time of initiation of pembrolizumab, all of these patients had already received prior therapies, and some of them multiple prior therapies by the time they went on trial. Um, the five-year survival rate for patients in the 1 to 49 percent group, uh, again, was about half of what was seen in this pdl one greater than 50 percent group. And unfortunately, um, the five-year survival was fairly limited among patients who were negative for pdl one in current clinical trials looking at pembrolizumab, pembrolizumab is generally given for two years. And so we look specifically at patients who received two years or more of pembrolizumab. Um, in that group, as you can imagine, uh, the majority of them were patients who did have an objective response. And as you can see, in both the treatment naive and the previously treated group of patients, uh, the five-year survival uh, exceeded 75% um, in both of these groups. We have periodically updated data from the Keynote 001 study, um, this being, of course, the lar longest experience of patients with non-small cell lung cancer receiving pembrolizumab. Um, and one of the things, of course, we have looked to assess is whether or not there is an, a, a late onset of toxicities, particularly immune-related toxicities. Um, what this uh, sort of figure shows here is the comparison of our data at five years compared to an analysis took place at three years, and as you can see, um, there is a fairly minor increase in uh, the immune-mediated uh, adverse events at that uh, between three and five years. So in conclusion, <clears throat> non-small cell lung cancer advanced disease generally has been a disease where we have considered patients to be very unlikely to be living five years. Five-year uh, survival, of course, is a benchmark that has typically been used in cancer. And it is certainly uh, encouraging to have seen uh, the over 15 percent uh, five-year survival in this group. Um, it was particularly impressive uh, to see the 25 percent five-year survival group in patients who received P 
PD, uh, pembrolizumab who had PDL1 of at least 50%. Patients who have this level of PDL1 staining uh, often in clinical practice today do receive single agent pembrolizumab. And um, to have these, uh, these five year survival data is, is certainly encouraging. Uh, it's particularly encouraging among the patients who do well, among those who had uh, at least two years of pembrolizumab. Over three quarters of the patients remained alive at five years. The safety data did not really show any uh, unanticipated late toxicity, uh, which I consider encouraging. And I think in total, the data confirm that pembrolizumab uh, has potential to improve long-term outcomes for both treatment-naive and previously treated patients with advanced non-small cell lung cancer. Mm -hmm.